I participate in many gaming communities, mainly in arcade racing fandoms. From Burnout, Ridge Racer, Crash Time, and more, it's great interacting with the fans of the games that I enjoy. However, some of these communities have ended up developing circle jerks when it comes to a particular game. This is a common problem in many fandoms, but I wanted to address it with the arcade racing communities in particular. It's such an issue at times that I think it's important this is talked about. Before getting into the main topic, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to criticize people's opinions here. What I want to show is the issues that come from how players think and present their opinions to others. I think the problems that I will cover can really kill discussions and negatively affect people on how they treat games in this genre. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The three communities I see these fanboy problems with the most are Flatout, Burnout, and Need for Speed. Many fans have deemed Flatout 2, Burnout 3 Takedown, and Need for Speed Most Wanted as the best games made in those series. They have been idolized to be these almost perfect creations, which ends up being very detrimental, not only in these fandoms, but outside of these communities. Firstly, it can be hard to have good, critical discussions about those games. Don't get me wrong, these are all fantastic games, but they aren't perfect. Players should be able to talk about their flaws without major backlash. Yet some fans can take it as that people are attacking or hating on the game with little reason, which triggers heated conversations that leads to a toxic atmosphere. Just because someone has something negative to say about a game doesn't mean they dislike or hate the game. Burnout Revenge is my favorite game of all time, but I can still easily talk about its problems. The game is a bit lacking when it comes to content, its Xbox 360 version has bad graphical improvements, making it hard to see, and the 360 version also made the vehicle physics heavier, which messes up the car combat and aftertouch. It's always important to recognize any game's shortcomings, even if it's a game that you highly regard. It's critical that we understand the games we play will never be perfect. Secondly, I see fans disregarding or saying to skip the previous games just to jump right to the best one. And over a decade and a half later, even though I started reviewing the Burnout series from the beginning, I still get endless requests to basically ignore them and go straight to Burnout 3 Takedown because it's that good. So my aim over the next few weeks or months, depending on my work ethic, which we all know is terrible, is to do an almost complete retrospective on the series. What I hope to do is to cover every single Need for Speed game from Underground onwards, including ports and not including mobile ports or any game that came before Underground because, to be honest, I don't have anything particularly interesting to say about them. It's this opinion that since the sequel improved on nearly every aspect from the previous, that means the older games aren't worth your time. This attitude ends up ignoring great games because they aren't considered as good as the ones that came after it. The first Flat Out has much heavier physics and much more rural environments like snowy courses you don't get in Flat Out 2. The first two Burnout games, while lacking the takedown mechanic, still nail that sense of danger when racing through the traffic-filled streets. Lastly, the previous Need for Speed games before Underground are still worthwhile and have a different feeling than the newer games. Predecessors shouldn't be ignored because they can still be as enjoyable as the games that release after them. Thirdly, anything that comes out after is always cast in the shadow of those games. Even if the newer games have better aspects than the fan favorite, they are still put down for not being as good. When a flat out 2 spiritual successor called Trail Out started getting noticed, there were some people who were quickly writing off the game before giving it a good chance. Burnout Revenge and Paradise sometimes aren't given a fair shake due to how they changed up the formula from Takedown. Lastly, when it comes to Need for Speed, well, that's a tricky one. The fan base is so divided on what they're looking for, so no matter what the developers do, not everyone will be satisfied with the next installment. It's understandable that players want a game that is better in every aspect than the previous. However, we don't live in a perfect world for this to be a reality. There will always be a game that comes out as the majority fan favorite in a community, but it's time to change how many of us view those games. Flat Out 2, Burnout 3 Takedown, and Need for Speed Most Wanted are not the best arcade racers ever made because there is no greatest arcade racer of all time. That all comes down to what a particular player is looking for in this genre. Everyone will have their own personal favorites and what they consider is the best arcade racer within their own set of reasons. Also, I'm not advocating for people to completely change their opinions or to start playing shitty racing games. 
However, what I am saying is to keep an open mind and not be so quick to write off games. There are plenty of fun and great arcade racers that many players haven't given the chance because of this fanboy mentality. While I mainly cover the communities of Flat Out, Burnout, and Need for Speed in this video, I hope that these issues can be improved in any fandom that struggles with it. Let's try to change this attitude by making sure to understand issues with any game, not disregarding the predecessors, being open to newer games, and most importantly, respecting other people's opinions. This has been Gamer Alex. I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.